Welcome back. The short hiatus has ended. Pull up the power poles because right now we are super stoked to bring to you here live from day one of the Forest Wood Cup, the legend. My, my idol. He's my idol. This is Jimmy Houston, ladies and gentlemen. He's live here on Straight Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. Yeah. Woo. It, let's see. We... Uh oh, we. I don't know what that means. They're, even the hiatus. The hiatus ended. The hiatus. The hiatus uh, has ended. We, I love it. We make up words here on Outdoor Cartoon hey, Television. Hey, I'm Jimmy. into making up words. Well, that's that's <laughs> what we do. <laughs> up at Remick, this is Ryan Popcorn Whitaker. JP High is here, and so is Andrew Ellenberger and Jimmy Houston. Jimmy, uh, it, this is a this is a big deal going on right now, man. This Forestwood Cup, dude. You know, it's really, it's really a big deal. You know, we got a big crowd out here today in Columbia. The fish are biting out on Lake Murray. Uh, the, the guys are catching some really good fish out there. You know, the last couple of times that FLW has been to Murray, I think it took about 13 pounds a day average to win. Yep. And it may end up taking 13 pounds a day average to win here, but there's a lot of people out there. I have beaten that already today, and I right. think there's at least one or two 20-pound stringers, 18, 17, 16, so pretty good tournament. I think all those guys were sandbagging me last night at the red carpet event when we did the show from there. We were asking uh, them to sandbag us. Yeah. You, you haven't learned that by now. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing how difficult it is in practice. The guys cry, crying and moaning and carrying on, getting one or two bites a day, complaining about the water level, the water temperature, the weather. The color of the uh, water, every, everything. Everything in the world. Weeds don't look right. And yet right. they go out there and smack them, you know. And, and uh, uh, th these fishermen are so good nowadays that they're going to smack them. You just do not pay any attention to what they tell you. It, it, you uh, can't. <laughs> no, I, I talked to two or three of them that actually told me the truth. And uh, and they did. They, they were catching really good fish. And, and uh, they knew that some of the others that were. So I knew it was going to be a little bit better tournament that we'd had here in the past. And, uh, it, you know, it's uh, it, you know the tournament's uh, tomorrow and Sunday also. I think they cut back to the top ten on Sunday. But uh, uh, it's still it's going to get tougher perhaps as the day time goes on. You know, they're, they, they had good cloud cover out there, perfect conditions today. Actually, it might be even better conditions tomorrow. So uh, I expect it's going to be it's going to be exciting. It's setting up nice, and the and the whole they call this the jewel of the Carolinas. That, that is an appropriate name. I love that. That's yeah, good. Yeah. You know, I, I've had some really good tournaments on uh, Lake Murray. Uh, I finished third in a big mega bucks tournament here years ago and won thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, got beat by about a pound. So this lake uh, is very good. It, when it had a lot of grass, it was probably a better fishery than it is now. But uh, but uh, there's some of the grass coming back in areas and uh, and it is a it's a tremendous lake to fish. It's it's a lot of fun. Speaking it's, of, it seems like a lot of these guys are catching fit. The little footage I saw, it seems like they're catching them schooling. Is that is that that's going to be a deal where they might not come up again, right? Well, I mean, you got to be in the right place at the right time. That that's definitely a situation of being in the right spot when it happens, and that's exactly what happened out there early this morning. A couple five pounders, a three pounders off schooling fish, and they uh, they there are certain areas at their schools, and the guys that know where those areas are are going to be in those areas. But yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, a guy that catches a really big string today might have a hard time even catching five yeah, fish just, tomorrow. You can do it in a hurry. And, uh, and and one of the things that's causing that schooling activity to happen uh, is the lack of grass. You know, obviously the lake's still got a lot of fish in it, sure. a lot mm -hmm. of big fish. Uh, and if those fish get to running around in big wolf packs out there, and uh, if you're there when they are and they show you where they are, uh, they're pretty easy to catch. Right. And right. now that that's something, too, where, I mean, the electronics are going to play a big factor, but it seems like... You know, it's it's not as easy to catch them unless they're on top, unless you can actually see them. Now, is there a way you can get them going? Hey, the you can see the, them on the electronics. Hey, the electronic that God gave you right here. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, the, that's, right that's the one. He gave you two of them, one, one on each side of your nose. Those that's are, the electronics that work out there where they're schooling. And and you know, and ironically, you know, uh, you, you mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, being in the area and being able to see fish breaking and hear fish breaking. At a little bit of a distance is really really critical. Watching for the birds is really critical. So you know right. it's kind of an old-fashioned fishing that we used to catch fish back way before we had all these fancy electronics. You've uh, got to be aware of the senses. You know we do have a tool nowadays that called a hydrowave. Yeah. That just that we all use. It's on everybody's boat, and and a lot of the fishermen, we we sometimes have a, a doubt about whether it works really well or not. However, we we all have them. We all use them. 
And the times that you doubt it is the times when you got that hydro wave running and you've gone four hours without a bite. And I, I've seen it happen. I, I mean, you turn that, that hydro wave on, it'll actually bring shad up up to your trolling motor. You've seen that, right? No, no doubt about it. And where we've really noticed it the most happening, and, and it could be a critical factor in some of these schooling fishes, where we've noticed it a lot is back, uh, back when we were allowed to use an umbrella rig or an Alabama rig, uh, we'd be out on these points uh, early in the year where these fish had schooled up for the winter time, and then they'd move to the points before they move in to spawn. And we could see these fish in treetops, sometimes a lake like, say, uh, Table Rock, where, uh, where you're fishing maybe 80, 90, or 100 foot of water, but you're fishing trees that come up 50, 60, 70 foot off the bottom, and the fish are around the top of these trees, still maybe 20 or 25 or 30 foot deep. And you can see these fish on your locator. You can see the schools of shad around, and you know they're there, but they're not very active. You're not getting bites. Uh, sometimes turning that, that, uh, that, that hydro wave on, turning it off, turn it back on, you know, varying the sounds would cause the shad to begin to get a little active, cause them to move a little closer to the surface, start to flit around a little bit, and cause those bass to get more active. So wow. the hydro wave is one piece of electronics. It might be pretty pretty valuable right here. And, and yeah. you know it works. We, we had Gene Eisenman on, the creator of the Hydro Wave, right, uh, right before Gene's you Gene's a very good friend, very and, good friend. And uh, the fact of the matter is, and you kind of touched on it right there, Jimmy, whether um, you, you want to say it works or you want to say it's just a, a, a fad, uh, every fishing professional has <laughs> every one, one on there. Every one of them. <laughs> every one. I've, I've got my new Ranger uh, 521L. Uh, we are just working on the order this week, as a matter of fact, because it takes a while to get a get a Ranger boat built, you know. And and uh, and and that's a, we have a list that we put all the equipment that we have sent to Ranger, our power pole blades, uh, our Mercury motor, our Ray Marine electronics, and and about the third or fourth line down, we got a hydro wave down there. Yeah. So so I've got that on my and list. Gene and Gene actually broke it to us, Jimmy, that he has a new sound that he's working on for the hydro wave. It's called the Jimmy Houston laugh. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that may scare them to death. That <laughs> might scare them to death. They may jump in the boat. They may jump in the boat. We got to have that. <laughs> if I was a bass and I heard that, I'd be running. Nah, I, I guarantee you. I promise you. <laughs> Jimmy, hey, 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 hey I, I, you know, I've given a lot of bass. Some sugar, and I gotta, I gotta tell you, you know, I'm a really, I'm a pretty good kisser. I mean, I have references. I'm a pretty good kisser, and uh, and 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 uh, there might be some of those five or six pounders that got them a little sugar when they were two or three pounds, or maybe when they were two pounds and three pounds. They hear that laugh, they come, they're going to come looking. They do. <laughs> and, and Popcorn, they, they're going to come looking. <laughs> they tell their grandkids about the time oh, Jimmy Houston kissed them. Oh, get them all gathered around, you know, <laughs> gathered around them. Tell them, listen, you're not going to believe this. Got me right here. Got me right here. Yeah, two years later, got me right here. Yeah, he I, loved me a lot more when I was, when I was bigger. <laughs> how, how long you been doing this, man? I mean, I lost track. Did you? You know, uh, we've been doing the, the television show 40 years. Uh, 2017 wow. with our 40th year on national television. Begin January will be year number 41. This year was our 51st year fishing national tournaments. I fished uh, my first national tournament back before there was a BASS, before there was a, an FLW um, in 1966 when I was a senior in college there at, at, in Oklahoma. When you had like awesome bell bottoms and stuff. You know the, I did. Yeah, those, those <laughs> were amazing. You know I did. Yeah, it was amazing. Dude. Sports <laughs> Illustrated's got a picture of those. They had a, they had a picture of those in Sports <laughs> Illustrated and uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> I may bring them back. I you and Ricky Green oh, had, sure? to, had the bell bottoms going. Start year number fifty-two. I may bring them back next yeah, year. That would be. I think deal. fishing needs but a new fashion. I had stars trend. and yeah. I had stars back. and stripes down the side. Of yes, it. I, rem- cool. I remember them that well, cool. man. That was that, cool. That was some good hey, stuff. When you're naturally cool, the sun shines on you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about working on a new show for you. Okay, are you ready to? I'm an idea man. You know that about me. That's I feed it. the barbecue sauce right to the cow That's and the it. tuna to the man. That's it. Mayonnaise to the tuna fish. That's it. So it's called um, it's called fire fireside stories with Jimmy Houston. Fireside stories. Fireside like stories with like Jimmy it. Houston. We do it in the winter time when the fish aren't. Yeah, very well. exactly. And 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 <laughs> I like what, that. I, what I think the opening story that I would like to do with you, Jimmy, is um, your is the story that I remember from from one of your books. Okay. And it's about the it's about the uh, squirrel. <laughs> okay, so let's let's do a, episode one of of Jimmy Houston's fireside story and look right in that camera. And, well, and, it was it was just kind of it was a neat thing. I'd never seen anything like it before, you know. And I, I was fishing. I was actually fishing down there in southern Oklahoma, and uh, I was going down the bank, and and I, I looked up and I saw a squirrel run out on on a little log, 
And I was kind of, you know, I mean, I'm a wildlife guy. I love to hunt as well as fish. And I was kind of watching that squirrel. He ran out there, and I, I looked at it, and there was an, an acorn laying out on the end of that log. I guess it had fallen off a tree and evidently hit and bounced and perfectly landed on the end of that log, and that squirrel went out there. And, uh, and he picked that acorn up, and just he turned around to run back, a big bass jumped over that log and ate the squirrel. And, I mean, it took my breath away. And, I mean, I'm throwing my spinnerbait over there, making cast after cast after cast, <laughs> trying to catch that big bass. I mean, actually, he probably weighs a pound or two more because he just ate a big fox squirrel. And, uh, and, and, and you know, and I, I, I couldn't get that fish to bite. I guess he had that squirrel in his mouth, and I couldn't get him to bite. And so I fished out there, and I fished all around that log, and I pitched a few jigs in there. And, and throw a worm in there, crank a crankbait by bumping that crankbait into the log, and I could not get that fish to bite. I was thinking, man, I need an acorn-colored bait, but but I couldn't get him to bite, and so I, I you know, just went on the trolling motor on down the bank, and and I got about about 40 or 50 yards, and I heard this big blow up, and uh, and, and I looked back there, and 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 it was just, this bass had come up, and he was right on the surface, and he laid another acorn right up on the end of that log, <laughs> and I thought, wow. They're smarter than I thought they were. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder there I can't catch right them. There. Jimmy no Houston, wonder. Fireside Stories. Right here, you heard it first. It premiered. They love it. The, the crowd's going nuts, Jimmy. They, they, they absolutely love it, man. No, seriously, one of my favorite stories, man. And, and, and again... It's mostly true. It's mostly true. It's a true story that you just made up a long time ago. That, that's what it is. <laughs> that's the deal. But you've been you've been referred to as America's favorite fisherman. I mean, it's it's true, man. I mean, you're an idol to so many of us fishermen, and it, it seems so weird. We were talking with 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 Luke Duncan a little earlier, and and how surreal it is for guys like us, you know, to be able to sit down and just and, and talk with with. Guys like you and Larry Nixon and and, and just, just the legends. Larry's doing well in tournament today. You I know. know. They call Larry the general, and uh, I uh, Larry's uh, I, last I saw he was in third or fourth place. And actually, you know, it's it's kind of funny because Larry, uh, of course, is uh, you know he's got a lot of gray, a lot of gray in his face now too. But uh, <laughs> but, but you know, I actually drew Larry in his, his very first tournament. He fished. On, uh, we was on uh, uh, Lake Gaston in Alabama, which is right next to Bug Island or Kerr Reservoir in, no, I said Alabama and Virginia. Uh, and uh, Lake Gaston, and I drew Larry, I believe it was either the first or second day of the tournament, I believe it was the first day. And, uh, and we fished together that day and, 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 and had a great time. Both of us caught a pretty good string of fish. And, and I remember coming in that evening, and my wife, Chris, who, you know, fished bass and gal for those 21 years and won about 25 boats. And, right. And, uh, but, uh, but, but she told me, she said, she said, how was that boy to fish with today? And, and I said, uh, he was a lot of fun to fish with. And she said, is he pretty good? And I told her, I said, let me tell you. I said, I told him out there today, I said, if you'll learn how to cast, I said, you're going to be the one of the best fishermen ever. I said, that boy's going to do really, really good. And uh, there's been a lot of things I've not been right about in my life. A lot of things I've been 100 percent wrong, but I sure write about Larry Dixon. Yeah. I was sure right about Larry, and I, and I did tell him that. He tells that story that that's what Jimmy told me, and he told me so. I still never have learned to cast very well, but I could I could still catch him. And but he's learned to catch cast very well. I'm telling you. And speaking of casting, I can, I'm going back in the songbook here, man. But I remember the the, the first time, and I know you you don't remember this, but. I was a little kid, and we met at a, a sports show. In, I remember. In, in, yeah, you remember it well, <laughs> like it was yesterday. Yeah, and, uh, and, and you actually had me stand still, and you wrapped a spinnerbait around my ear. Yeah, I, it, it was. Yeah, I have to do that with kids because adults are smart enough not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do that with kids. Yeah, I, I have so, to do that with I kids. I was like, "What is he doing?" And my my mom's looking like, yeah. what, "What is this guy doing here?" And yeah. uh, boom, but you yeah. nailed it, dude. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it's, I usually get that right about one out of every ten times. So you just have to, you happen to be the one. <laughs> Jimmy's like, "Here, wear this safety helmet. Yeah, you Pat. To, you'll yeah, be fine. You, you have to be the you, one. You, you'll, you'll be you fine. Be the one. Yeah. But but talk about, I mean, an amazing caster and how important." Important casting is in bass fishing, dude. I mean, you are you are practiced at the art. You're the original. It's an important part of the game. There's no doubt about it. And the fishermen nowadays, you know, it was something that uh, back in a lot of the earlier days of fishermen, uh, a lot of the guys were not quite as skilled as they really should be. But uh, the guys nowadays are just absolutely amazing. The uh, the fishermen that we have nowadays, the younger guys coming up, uh, they learn so quickly and and they learn uh, the, the the correct things that they should do. 
and uh, they have a lot more opportunity to learn. And but, but yeah, casting accuracy is still an extremely part, important part of the game, and, and always will be. Always 100%. will be. Yeah, and, and, it's like they come out of the womb skipping boat docks. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're they, right. They, 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 they see these high school kids just pitching jigs under yeah. boat docks. Oh, yeah. It's they, YouTube. They, they yeah. watch it on yeah. the YouTube as yeah. soon as they're born. These kids are so. I mean, they 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 they're they're so good and. And they, uh, they, they, their eyes, their eyes flash now. They don't even need, need, need to use running lights on their boat. That's how bright <laughs> they are, man. I'm telling you. And, now, uh, it's cool though. It's great. I love it. I, you know. And, and the amazing thing um, is that it, it's is with fishing, is that you can continue to play. We, we mentioned Larry Nixon. You know, Larry's one of the senior guys out there playing, playing extremely well. Uh, you know, I'm the oldest guy fishing out there, with the exception of my buddy Gary Yamamoto, who's just a tad older than me. Okay. And, but I think I'm the oldest one to ever qualify for the FLW Championship. Uh, fished uh, my last Bassmaster Classic at a, at a pretty pretty advanced age. <laughs> but uh, but that's the great thing about this sport is you can continue to play. Uh, I have a lot of friends that have played uh, all kinds of major league sports, uh, baseball and NBA and the NFL and and uh, you know even NASCAR drivers and stuff. And and as they begin to get a little bit older, they cannot uh, they cannot play in, with the, the game with the younger guys. They have to quit playing. Right. And uh, we can't we can continue to play it in bass fishing. You know I, I still fish. Uh, the, the FLW tournaments, Gary Yamamoto, as I said, is a little bit older than me, and he still fishes the FLW tournaments. Roland Martin, who is uh, quite Roland, a bit Roland Morgan. Yeah, yeah, Roland, yeah Roland, Roland Morgan. Roland Morgan's what Bill calls him. Yes. Roland Morgan, uh, you know, 77 <laughs> years old, be 78 next spring, and, and he still fishes in tournaments and does really, really well. As a matter of fact, a uh, year before last, Roland and his partner fished in the redfish tournaments down there. You know the tournaments where – they had to throw all the fish back because yeah, they throw get all the, the big slot. ones back, <laughs> and they uh, they the whole show is just stuck on the mud. Those redfish yeah, yeah. tournaments, that's yeah. what the, the redfish tournaments are. And uh, Roland Martin and his partner won the Rookie of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> the Roland, irony of Roland all that. Was, Roland was seventy. Four at the time, and his partner was 81. Yeah. And they won Rookie of the Year. Wow! <laughs> so think about that for a minute. <laughs> and uh, but but you know it's it's fantastic to be able to do it. And there's no doubt, I, you know, I can't com- compete as well as I could at a younger age, and, and don't don't catch them nearly as well. But but when I do make the money in a tournament, it feels really really good. And, and the young guys really they 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 like to see me do good. They appreciate it when I do. And and uh, it's the same way with Gary Yamamoto. Uh, I think the last tournament of the year, uh, he he had a really good tournament, maybe the tournament right before that, and uh, everybody was so tickled that he did well. And and uh, you know, you look at Ricky Clun. Ricky Clun is just a little bit. He's the same age as my wife. He's a little bit younger than me. Uh, he won a tournament last year yeah, and, uh, in Florida. Uh, and and uh, you know, he's missed the class. He made like I don't know a hundred classics or something, but uh, or fifty or I don't know how many. Five he's made, thousand. But, uh, he's made yeah. a lot of classics, but he's not made it much lately. But uh, and and uh, the age is a big factor, although. Ricky and I argue about that. He says it's not. He said age has got nothing to do with it, but it does. And, <laughs> and uh, but 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 he's he's a the, you know he's a great great fisherman. But the cool thing is he still fishes at the top level uh, in bass, just like I still fish at the top level in FLW. Even though we're older than most, any in fact, right. you almost had two of them together, and we got that age. So that's what's so good about it. You can't do that in the PGA. Do you feel worn out? You can't out? do that in the NFL. Do you, you can't feel do worn that out after MLB. a day? Sometimes on the water. Can oh, you feel I it in do. your bones now that you're older? Oh, I, mean? I do. I, I do. You know, and you have you have a lot of more aches and pains you used to have, but but it's always been that way. Sure. You know, I've always when I was thirty, when I was twenty five, when I was twenty two fishing tournaments. At the end of the day, I was completely spent, and I, uh, you know, I hurt, and I was, you know, I fished daylight till dark in practice, and it, I've always felt that way uh you, you know the, the, it's a little bit more difficult getting up and down uh, your peripheral vision is not as good uh, your reflexes are not quite as good your balance is not as good i have incredible eyes still i've got 2020 vision in one 2015 in the other wow uh though i paid for those high dollar eyes they're high dollar <laughs> eyes <laughs> they're, they're from six million dollar yeah, man they, eyes. they are what god gave me is not quite that good now but <laughs> but i purchased uh when this hair falls out i'm going to purchase some really pretty hair too i've had awesome. this ugly hair <laughs> All my life, I'm going to buy some really good looking stuff. Do you dye your hair now, Jimmy? No, no or is that natural? No, no. But when I, when I buy hair, I'm going to get some of that. Uh, I'm going to get some of that. I'm going to get some that's like blue and maybe red and an orange and maybe. Uh, Jimmy's you going know, punk that's, rock. That's, maybe, that's maybe, emo. Maybe, maybe that's emo. A, maybe yeah. have a little emo punk, Jimmy punk Houston. Rook, uh, look to it, and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, the only thing I worry about, I worry about if I got some of that red and. And blue hair, I might run into one of those old hippies that made love to a parrot. Might think I'm his son. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of bothering me. <laughs> Life troubles. <laughs> I mean, I tell you. 
But uh, but I'm going to buy some of that pretty hair. I'll get uh, I get you know like curly, wavy. There you go. Uh, nice yeah. curls. I'll lend you some, some of this perm. if you need yeah. some. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought you had one of those extensions. I <laughs> saw that. I thought we just bought him one of those extensions. Extensions are good. <laughs> they sell them I in might, aisle six. I might I might uh, he knows where they buy yeah. the extensions. <laughs> I, I've, uh, I've I've been doing some appearances lately with. Uh, with with uh, with at some places and and where there's been some black girls there and the black girls all had these big head of hair yeah and the first thing I always ask them I say is that yours or, or what <laughs> is that extensions and they always tell me it's mine honey I bought and paid for it there it is and so they're wearing those extensions and they braid them all up they get you know and, and I'm I'm thinking about extensions and I I ask them I said do they have those because like, they always wear them like in red and blue and black and all these I said they got any of those in blonde. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they said, not where we buy these, but, <laughs> but uh, they got everything but, in Hollywood. Surely, surely they got them. All you got to do is go to Hollywood. I imagine Hollywood's got blonde. Yeah, extension. I'm sure they yeah, got I need, that. I need some. Yeah, I they, need some. They, they, they definitely have that there. Whoa. Is, is that God tuned in? Yeah, I think yeah, that, God yeah, you're getting out of line, I think. I hear that. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> I hear that. I still, hey, Jimmy, as far I, as that. I, I put my tithe in the plate, God. I just. <laughs> oh, you know. Okay. He knows. He, he knows everything. He already knew about that. Yeah, I didn't he know did. that. He, he did. knew. He already knew. <laughs> Jimmy, as far as being worn out after the tournament, if you don't feel like that, you didn't do it right. I mean, that's, that's Well, you're means. exactly right, Popcorn. Uh, if, uh, if you're not just completely spent after a tournament, you haven't given it everything. If you're not that way uh, after your practice. But, but one, thing that, one thing that I'm not sure of, uh, you know, we practice, and my wife, you know, and uh, she still practices with me daylight till dark. No matter the weather, rain, shine, cold, it doesn't matter. We practice daylight till dark every day, the three days of practice. And if I get there, sometimes I have to work and don't get there all three days, but we try to get all three of them in. But uh, we have now an off day in the tournaments in FLW where uh, we, we practice Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. We're off on Wednesday. I'm not really sure after three days of practice, if we didn't have that off day, I could make it happen. Because it's a the recharge. Day, yeah, recharge. The recharge day is a big deal. Yeah. And, and uh, we do a lot of work. It's not an off day for us. We, we do shows and we do, you know, appearances like at Walmart or O'Reilly's or Tractor Supply or something for uh, Shell Rotella and for Quaker State. And, uh, and of course, you, obviously, you've got to wind on new line, get all your lodge and reels sure. and tackle ready for the, the competition. But without that off day, it would be pretty difficult to play the game at, yeah. at, at over 70 years old. It, it really would, Popcorn. You're right. What's, what's new in Jimmy Houston's life right now? <laughs> well, you know, we, we're doing the same thing uh, we always do. I was talking to a guy on a radio show the other day, and, and he said, you know, it's amazing. You're doing the same thing on television you did 30, 40 years ago, and yet we still want to watch every week. And, and I said, well, that's really true. We are doing exactly the same thing. And, and uh, what makes uh, the television show uh, successful and popular is it's reality television. It was a reality show before there ever was such a sure. term as reality television because that's what the outdoor television is. We're letting the fish and the day fishing make that show just like it does when, when we just go fishing. Yeah, if you and I go fishing, script. that's yeah. a reality day, and, and we don't know what's going to happen. We, we know what we want to happen, but the, the day is going to make itself, and, and I think that's it. But, you know, the, 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 the biggest thing that we've got going, of course, we're, we show on a lot of different networks. Uh, I think our show airs about 20 times a week, 21 or 22 times, and uh, we're on NBC Sports, CBS Sports, Destination America, uh, the American Heroes Network, which is the old military yeah. channel. Uh, we uh, have, uh, uh, have got a, made a deal just the other day to run on the Pursuit Network. Next awesome. year, Hank, Hank Parker and I are going to run side by side, I think, on a Thursday night, plus a couple, two or three other times during the week. Uh, it looks like we are probably also going to be on the Discovery Channel next year. Wow, oh, that's great. Uh, we that's are, huge. We're negotiating really with them right now. With we're, the same format? Yeah, it'll be the exact, it'll still be Jimmy and Shadow. That is awesome. Exactly the same thing on Discovery Network, and, and or they call it the Discovery Channel. So it's going to so. be you on Shark Week versus Sharks on Discovery Network? No, yeah, is that said, what you're said, telling we'll be, me? We'll be catching them on a rod and reel. We're not be, we will not be swimming with them. <laughs> and I won't, I won't be out there with Kevin Harrington in the Shark Tank. You know, I won't be doing that, buying business. I, I know Kevin's a good friend of mine. We, will, we won't be doing that. But, okay. uh, but, and then also, you know, one of the big things, you know, now we can watch um, so much stuff digitally. And uh, we have our own digital television network called JHL. Not TV stands for Jimmy Houston Legends. Yep, uh, you can pull that up and watch it on your iPhone. We your actually iPad. have a few episodes of ours absolutely, on there. Absolutely, absolutely, you certainly do. And uh, we got Roland Martin on there. We got Drew Gregory. It's Roland Morgan. You uh, keep Roland saying Morgan. his name wrong. <laughs> Roland Morgan. <laughs> okay. uh, and uh, and we will eventually have hundreds and hundreds of our shows as well as uh, many many other shows that that go back into the years past. Uh, I have noticed uh, recently that ESPN Classic 
is beginning to air something. We were on ESPN for 20 years, one of the longest running shows ever on ESPN. Yeah. And they have, ESPN Classic is starting running some old Jimmy Houston outdoor shows. So uh, you can actually pick some of that up on ESPN uh, uh, Classic uh, as well as JHL.TV, our YouTube channel. We put stuff up. Uh, virtually every day on our YouTube channel. So, uh, you know, that's a cool thing. You can watch a lot of stuff, new stuff as well it's, as old It's history stuff. there. Dude. It's cool. Speaking it's cool. of old stuff, one of my favorite old Jimmy Houston episodes, and, and correct me here, I might be off a little bit, but the, it was either in Mexico or Cuba. and We've, we've been both places. I, it was, I think it was the Cuba <laughs> show. Many times. Man, just, just wrecking them uh, on, the, in, on the old famous copper blade, blue and chartreuse, Jimmy Houston signature spinner bait. Five and a half foot pistol grip rod. Yeah, just, we, I mean, we we moved to a little bit longer rods nowadays, but yeah. we're still using that blue <laughs> blue and chartreuse, blue white and chartreuse spinnerbait. I just actually developed uh, I just actually developed some new uh, round bladed spinnerbaits uh, for the Jimmy Houston Legend baits at uh, that Lucky Strikes building. You got copper ones, and uh, we do not have copper. It's Why so, does nobody have copper, Jimmy? You know, I think that one of the deals is that uh, copper doesn't sell nearly as well as gold and nickel, and, and it's just a matter nowadays. You know, everything's done on numbers and computers, and and uh, you know, I, but I, I change and put copper blades on them and use them in tournaments. All I the do time. too. All I love time. it all the time. And, I learned uh, that from you. You know, you get certain color waters; they'll bite the copper way better than they will everything else. And I'm kind of glad everybody doesn't have them, to be honest. Should we have not <laughs> talked about that a little bit? <laughs> no, that's fine. You know, but, <laughs> but you have to buy copper, copper blades to put on, and, and we do that. We do that a lot. We sure do. Awesome. And so you're uh, JHL TV, uh, Jimmy Houston on Facebook. Of course, Jimmy Houston Outdoors. Um, everywhere they can find you. We, we're on a lot of places. Uh, beautiful thing about what's going on now in the, in the world of television and, 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 and uh, the digital situations we have is that a, a, a person can watch and learn a lot about fishing. I was talking to, you mentioned the deal in Cuba. I was talking to somebody earlier, and he was, he was telling me he's going to Lake Picachos in Mexico. Okay. Uh, and uh, going down there fishing at Rod Spine Jr.'s camp, and I've been there a lot. I actually caught a 12-pound, 7-ounce bass down there a couple of years ago. I, I weighed that fish, but I normally just turn them back and kind of guess the weight, but my biggest I've ever caught 13-1. Wow. And I thought that fish was close, and he was, but he didn't quite make it, but I, if it was bigger, I wanted to know that. Yeah, sure. And so we weighed that fish before we released it, but the guy asked me, he said, I need to know a little bit about, more about Picachos and what kind of lures I should take. And, and I told him, but I told him, you know, you can actually go on JHL.TV, and we have some of those Picachi shows up there. And you can watch them. And yeah. you can actually see the lakes, see the places we are fishing. It's awesome. Learn a little bit about the techniques. And, and that's, that's, a, that's a pretty big advantage. A, a guy can get ready to go fish a tournament somewhere, like on Lake Sam Rayburn or, or Lake Table Rock we mentioned, uh, any of the lakes that, we, that we've had tournaments on or any of the lakes that we've done television shows on and learn a little bit and, and learn about it. And, and, and let me tell you, these young guys do that. It's amazing to me. I was talking to, to uh, one of the fishermen in the FLW tournament uh, on uh, is actually on Lake uh, uh, Hartwell. It was the first time I'd ever been on Hartwell, and I was up in this creek. And uh, it was Dave LaFever, who it was. Okay. You know, he was a great tournament fisherman. Sure. And Dave was talking to me, and he started telling me about a couple things. And he told me, well, so-and-so won this tournament. I heard tournament. your message on his answering machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he pays me a quarter every time he plays. Uh, got a little royalty on that deal. Yeah, he, he owes me $32,000. Is right that now. right? <laughs> I haven't got a check from him yet, but I'm, I'm still cyber. You hear that, Dave? Yeah, the money is probably coming in the mail at any moment. I've been watching, hoping he'll win a big tournament. Yeah, right. Then I'm going to go collect. I'm going to go yeah. collect. But... Uh, Dave was telling me about it. He said, you know, so-and-so won, a, won the bass tournament back here and such and such, and so-and-so won a classic back in this creek. And I told him, I said, Dave, God, dogs, I can't believe you're such a, a, a tournament historian. I can't believe you know that. Yeah. And he said, well, I looked it up. I looked up all the tournaments that was held here, and, and he knew where all the fish had been caught in tournaments there. Wow. And that's, uh, that's a little bit why Dave Lefevre's as good as he really is. R&D. Yeah. And that's why a lot of these guys are. They do a lot of research on it, and we've now got to the point where professional fishermen are just that. And they go fishing every day. Jason Christie, my buddy there at home, homeboy, that uh, I've known him ever since he Christie's was born. Christie's awesome. I, I've known him ever since he was born. Uh, I, you know, uh, fished with his dad and his uncle and fished tournaments against him, and uh, he lives just, he lives a quarter mile away from my store and my boat dealership. Uh, we've helped him in tournaments forever. I actually got him his first sponsorship deal with FLW with Mountain wow. Dew. Awesome. Uh, I was going to talk them into, into getting that for him when, when he was fishing FLW. And, uh, but, but Jason, when he's home there on Lake Tenkiller, he fishes every day. 
fishes every day. Sure. And, uh, or he hunts and, during and deer season. He, he hunts, yeah. or he, 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 you know, he, he'll go hunting and still go fishing. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but the professional fi- tournament fishermen, they do that just like in the off season. In the off season, Kobe Bryant was shooting 500 jumpers every day during the off season. Mm-hmm. And, stay in uh, shape. And, and they, they, and he's doing, he's, and, and so that's the, the professional fishermen are doing that nowadays. Plus, they're studying what goes on at every single lake, and and the rules are kind of getting around to where the practice period almost is going to be getting got down for BASS. It has right where yeah. they can't go fish those lakes except that official practice and no and info that, and no info at all. And I don't I haven't looked at the rules for FLW next year. I don't know if we have that rule or not. Uh, but I, I like it. I wish we did. It's pure. Because I don't. It is I, pure, know, I Jimmy. I, it really seems it, like most of the guys like it. Chris and I, they do. I, I think the FLW fishermen want that rule. I know I'd I vote for it in a heartbeat. But I know when Chris and I, we show up, we get there Saturday night, usually really late. We're out there early Sunday morning in daylight, and we fish till dark. And uh, we've got, a, we've got a, 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 you know, our GPS. We've got maps. We have no information. And we, we've done it that way forever. And it would probably help to get information, but uh, but we're we're doing it the old-fashioned way, and That's the way it should sometimes be. that hurts. But when you catch them, it really makes you feel good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Feel it's, so much it's satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're we're just about out of time, but but let's say uh, b- before you go, Jimmy, will you do me a huge favor? More than likely. Oh, okay. <laughs> let's sing a little song together. You so, ready? Sometimes sometimes I wonder when he starts asking for favors. <laughs> Yeah. Jimmy, come on, let's sing the Jimmy Houston theme song together this time. When you come on the show, you usually sing it by yourself, but let's sing it together. Make, make my dreams come let's, true, let's Jimmy. Let's go. You ready? Ready? Rising with the morning sun, got no work today. Might find me up on the bayou. You don't even know the words of your song. in the ocean, babe. <laughs> Might be fishing on a mountain stream or lake down in Tennessee. Why don't you grab your fishing pole and come along with me. Jimmy Houston and me and Ryan and Andy. You know, my buddy, and my buddy Andy Reesner wrote Woo! that song, plays piano for three dog guys. Woo! Yeah! That's Jimmy Houston. It's the bass fishing rock star. Right That's there. a three dog night song. That was amazing. Yeah, Jimmy, three dog night. thank you awesome. so much. You're awesome. We appreciate the support that you throw to show all the time, it. dude. I appreciate it. Excellent. Yeah, my, my buddy Eddie's uh, played for him for a long time. I think he's not playing with him anymore. <laughs> I got no friend the other day. And, uh, you know, uh, Corey Wells is the lead, dog, lead singer for Three Dog Night for yeah. years. Yep. And he died about. About a year that's the Jeremiah was a bullfrog Jeremiah guy. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. And that's, that's the deal yeah, right them, there. Them guys are. That is awesome. They were rock stars when I was a kid. <laughs> Thank you so much. They still going. Come here. Come I, here. I appreciate it, buddy. You're the best, dude. Hey, you're doing a good job. Thank you so you're doing much. A good answer, Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. All right, we still are we still live? Y'all this is amazing right, right now. Yeah, All right. <laughs> appreciate it. There it is. Uh, Jimmy Houston. I mean, he wow. just he's a showstopper. It's a room stopping showstopper. Who's this crawling in here now? <laughs> it's Jumping Joe Flash from FLW. Yeah. Joe Pagger here. What's going on? Let's see, grab these headphones. How you doing, buddy? Get comfy. Tough to follow that act. Oh, yeah, that's Jimmy Houston. Come on, you guys were singing up here. You had a crowd. I mean, yeah, that was amazing. That was awesome. <laughs> that, I mean, that was, that was bass fishing history, Joe. Absolutely. And Absolutely. speaking of bass fishing history, this is bass fishing history some, yes. right here. Yeah. 2017 right Forestwood Wood Cup. Absolutely. In the debut of the stray cast at the Forestwood Wood Cup. Dude, Come thank on. you so yeah. much for this, hey, by the way. Yeah. Thrilled you guys Why did you here? even invite us here? Thrilled you guys are here. Well, I'm a big fan of the show. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I love what you guys do and uh, wanted you guys to come out and be a part of it. So was yeah, thrilled you when again. you guys accepted the invitation. Now here we are. Here. It, we're super You've got stoked. Jimmy Houston on the show. Jimmy come Houston. On. I mean, it's, it, it's a dream come true. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and and Jimmy's going to get extension, so his hair is like mine next. <laughs> he made it about five what, yards, and now he's swamped for that's, that's Jimmy. Standard Jimmy Houston. <laughs> that, yeah. That's 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 his, no matter where Jimmy goes, everybody finds him. Yep, that's what happens. <laughs> but dude, you are working your butt off. Yeah, busy I mean, week for us. Yeah, dude. I mean, th- this is the deal right now, and, and you build up to this all season. Yep. And what a show you're putting on, Joe. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. It's the culmination of so, our season, so, so tell this them, is the granddaddy of them all. Tell America 
Uh, right. Tell Ven Venezuela is watching also. Okay. And also Istanbul is watching. Hi, Auntie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell everybody what you do for FLW. My job is uh, to generate media coverage for our guys. So wow. to get uh, guys like you coming out. We've got radio stations, uh, TV stations, newspapers. My job is to help them and make their lives easier. I'll line up interviews. I'll send out news releases, get the word out that we're in town. And, uh, yeah, get a big crowd. That's my... That's my goal. There it is. And you sure made it easy for us. Good, yeah. good. I mean, that means no, I'm doing okay. No, no, and yeah. we are the coolest people here, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We want that in writing, too. Yep. That needs to be yep. confirmed. Yes. <laughs> the red carpet event last night was outstanding. Yeah, I mean, we well. couldn't stop talking about it. Good, Our good. phone was blowing up, and, and every, I mean, it was like, wow. Yeah, yeah. what yeah. was your favorite part? Yeah, what was your, what was your <laughs> favorite part? <laughs> you liked when um, Watson and Dudley were together talking. Uh, it was interesting. You yeah, looked yeah. nervous yeah. as hell. No, you did. You I'm not. Guys nightmare. Sweating. Come on. Yeah. No, you... I thought the whole show was awesome. I think, uh, you know, Andy Morgan was good on there. The introduction to Terry Bolton. You know, he was on with Thrift, and I don't know if you guys were real familiar with Terry, but he's been an oh, FLW yeah. stalwart. Oh, we, so. uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We sure are familiar with him, and we're glad he, he decided to sit yeah. in there. You had a lot of big names on last night. Yeah, a lot and of shout fun. out when, to Dale Bowman there. He just said stalwart. Stal he did say stalwart. He did. And you can get <laughs> shots for stalwarts. It gets rid of it, too. You know that, right? <laughs> we used to have yeah. a segment yeah. called <laughs> stalwart. <laughs> so is this, the, is this the perfect storm, Joe? Is this how you and everybody creatively visualizes things, sure. right? So sure. is this is this what you creatively visualized as an event? So far, so good. I mean, uh, we started off this morning a takeoff. We had a huge crowd out. It was better than we envisioned. So better that than that was awesome. Jimmy's up to something. Yeah. Hold on a second. What, <laughs> what's Jimmy up to? Don't you think he looks like Rush Priebus? <laughs> <laughs> My language is much he's, cleaner. He's, My language is much cleaner. Yeah. He got the boots. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> no, we kicked that dude's everything, amazing. Kicked everything off this morning. Huge crowds. Uh, it's been fishing's been great. I hear uh, Anthony Gagliardi's got around twenty pounds. Does he really? Wow. So does See, we're Atkins. we're clueless to the world right yeah, now. What's I've going just, on? I haven't been able to watch the live feed. It's been going all day, but I haven't been able to watch. But I've been catching rumors, and uh, yeah, there's going to be a couple twenty pound stringers, which doesn't happen in August. So Dude, that's it's going to be a heck of a weigh in. We'll see how the weigh-in goes. Hopefully, so, uh, everybody sticks around and tell comes us on about over. that weigh-in. Sure. Like tell uh, people that are out here watching in the area, or if they still want to get a quick flight, absolutely, and, and come in. What's the deal? Where's absolutely. it at? Absolutely, uh, Colonial Life Arena here in Columbia, South Carolina. Doors open at four, and the show starts at five. Uh, so come on down to see us. If you can't make it. We'll, of course, be live streaming everything at FLWFishing.com. FLWFishing.com. But, uh, yeah, if you're in the area, anywhere close, come on down. We're giving away a Ranger boat on Sunday night. All you got to do is sign up and be here. Jimmy said so, I won it. Yeah? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, <laughs> we were giving away a Ranger boat on Sunday. It's already it's taken. For yeah. it. he, was, he was actually talking We got to some me. cool kayaks Oh, no, no, he was looking at me. Too, no. so. Oh, he had glasses on. I couldn't tell. <laughs> Joe, you, you were talking about something really cool about the takeoff this morning. Yes. You said you have a, you have a screen. That's actually broadcasting the live footage yeah. immediately yeah, after first, they take off. First time we ever did it. Uh, the live show is broadcasting from the start. So, yeah, everybody took off this morning and kind of turned around and started watching the live screen. That's Anthony so cool. ran to his first spot, and then two or three casts, he had a four-pounder. And the, <laughs> the crowd, crowd was wild. Perfect. Yeah, it was a perfect awesome. storm. It was really cool to see. You know, the local crowd was like, woo, everybody's cheering. And I'm like. We're on to something here. That's this what is watching, you know, a, a live spectator sport. Absolutely. Yeah. It was something that hasn't happened before, but was awesome to see. So cool. And, and we're really we're impressed. It, this is honestly the first type of um, event that we, we've been to uh, of this caliber. We've sure. never been to a cup. We've never been to a Bassmaster Classic. And, and, the, and by far, these are the two biggest events in bass fishing. Absolutely. The Forest Wood Cup and the Bassmaster Classic. And, and, and this, uh, I did not know what to expect. Yeah, I, I didn't know what to so, expect. So, what's your, what's dude? Your, I awesome. love it. Yeah, absolutely okay. love it. Awesome. It, Good to hear. I can't wait for the weigh-in. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm not sure what I've prepared for my speech at the weigh-in yet, <laughs> but I, I got a couple things in mind. You know, I mean. You want to come up and sing the anthem or something? I do. I could probably yes. Pull some strings. Yes, and, me and yeah. Jimmy will sing yeah? it together. Okay, I love it. How's I love that? It. And Watson. Yeah. Oh well, I don't know about Watson. <laughs> you ever heard him sing? <laughs> Uh, we, I, mean, I think we have heard of him. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, he did yeah. bust something out. He was in a church parking lot, actually. Yeah, and he was. Be interested to True see story. how he does today. Yeah. 
We'll see. Yeah, yeah well, I haven't heard anything. No, but so. we're super stoked for the for the for the weigh in too, man. Awesome. So, I mean, so this is this is kind of how you envisioned it. It's turning out okay. Yeah. Yeah. So far, good. so good. Everything's you're going you're smoothly. amazingly calm, and I know you got a lot on your. <laughs> it's plate. not always like that. I. Today has been pretty smooth. I'd knock on some wood here. I mean, yesterday, uh, too. Yeah. I was probably one of the 50 phone calls that you got yesterday. And oh, you, it was more than you that. Were still, you were still <laughs> 500 phone calls yeah, you got. Yeah, it was, it was the run 100, I'm sure, but good. Yeah. So I tried to be Well calm. done. Yeah. Well done, thank my you. friend. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> do you fish? Uh, not as much as you would think. I okay. do fish. I love bass fishing. But uh, most of the time when I'm at these things, I don't get to go out. I don't get a whole lot of time, so... I get out in central Minnesota, but up where I'm from quite a bit. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Traveling to all these cool places, probably not as much as you think. I have gone to some cool fisheries, you know, and got to go out, like Champlain and Okeechobee. And sure, sure. The big ones. Yeah. But uh, never been out fishing here on Lake Murray, though, unfortunately. Every time I'm here, it's the cup week, and we're, we're running. Yeah, I'd love to go fishing here, too. Yeah. Let's go fishing. Yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> you can get us a ranger, right? <laughs> There's some rods over there. Yeah, yeah we'll find well, something. where's Watson? Where's Watson when we need him? <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite FLW fisherman? All of them. No, Yeah, I, come on. <laughs> Give me the, tell me. Straight up. Who's no, your favorite? No, they are all awesome guys. That's I'm, a canned I'm, answer. They told right, you to say that. <laughs> Of course, everybody's got, like, their sentimental favorites. I yeah, mean, who's your sentimental? Everybody loves Larry Nixon, including myself. Everybody yeah. loves Jimmy Houston, uh, you know, Brian Thrift, Andy Morgan. All those guys are super to work with. You know, they're, they're the stars of FLW, so those are the guys that I work with on a day-to-day basis. I love them all. There's, there is not a bad angler that I've met yet, ever. I've been in the company for six years. There's nobody where I've been like, man, he's a real jerk. Well, he, some of them, though, yeah. wait, wait, there's no jerks. We know that. They're all yeah. cool as could be. But, like, for example, when you, you, you said you're a fan of our show, and we love that. Yeah. Now, when you see when we do promotions and we're having some of your guys on. Sure. Who do you get nervous about? <laughs> Who's one that you might, oh, they're well, like, oh, yeah, no, yeah. they're on straight cast. This yeah. is not going to be Basically, good. Basically, pretty much every guy you had on the show last night <laughs> you kept me on my toes. <laughs> you got Watson, Dudley, JT Kenny. You know, all these guys are huge personalities, very outspoken. We love them. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't get a little nervous, you know, putting him from a live mic. I, I push him to the edge. I, I, I do trust them. I do trust them. Yeah, them. they and know. I trust you, too. They, you, they know. Yeah. But I'd say you have to worry the most about J.T. Kenney. He, yeah, he's, he's one of them. He's Absolutely. special. Absolutely. Absolutely. Special's a good word. <laughs> he's a personality. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's a special personality. <laughs> J- he took over the show. <laughs> it was he awesome. J.T. is awesome. J.T. I mean, that's a nice way of saying it. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Anybody that shows up in a Hawaiian shirt, a fedora, and a, and a belt made out yeah. of $100 bills, <laughs> he is the Kenny Powers of bass fishing. You know that, right? <laughs> it fits. He's, he's, it Ken, fits. he's the Kenny Absolutely. Powers of bass fishing, Absolutely. that guy. It, it, it's, it's amazing. There, there's no doubt about it. So we got two days left after this. And yes. then you're done with this. You probably got another day or two of work after yep, that. Absolutely. Okay. What's, uh, what's going to be your unwind, Joe? What's your unwind? What's uh, your downtime? What are you going to do? Unwind's going to be going home to spend time with my new baby. With uh, your new baby. Yeah, I, uh, you, you miss her right now. I do. I do. I've been getting texts and pictures all the last couple days since I left, but definitely made leaving uh, for this event much harder than normal. But It never gets yeah. any easier. My yeah. daughter's 22, and it still gets That's what hard. I was talking to Chris Jones about that, and he said, w- wait till they start grabbing onto your leg and crying as you walk up there. And I went, oh, my yeah. gosh, I can't imagine. Because right but, now she's just like a little sack of, oh, cute yeah. little sack she, of potatoes. Yeah, you know? puking and peeing and pooping. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we do right now. So. Uh, but then once they look at you with them eyes, yep. you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's all over. Absolutely. But it's I'm probably going to get out fishing a couple days, too, once I get back home. and yeah. unwind. I, I live about 30 miles south of Mille Lacs Lake, so. You may have heard oh, of that nice. fishery, so yeah, grew up yeah, they there. Have so you know, there. You know, yeah. uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Joe Dirte, our friend, uh, Seth, Seth Dirte. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. big Seth fighter. Seth fan. Dirt. Yeah, yeah, Dirte. Yeah. Everybody in Minnesota loves Seth fighter. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Seth, Seth fighter is an animal. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> he is, man. Are and you getting any sleep? Do you sleep you know, at all of these I, things? I have not here at the Forestwood Cup. You'd think I would come here away from the newborn and get some sleep, but no, actually, you know, my fiance is a rock star. She takes care of all the night stuff, and I feel a little guilty sometimes, but I hand her off and say, you got it, babe. There it is. So, yeah, yeah, I've actually been getting quite a bit of sleep at home, doing all right, but at these things, I get about three, four hours a night. Just yeah. Busy. Because you're always on the phone. Yeah, but yeah, now that, fires. I mean, we'll be at the weigh-in tonight till probably eight, nine o'clock, and then yeah, it's up at four a.m. So by the time we get dinner and to bed, we get about four hours. Yeah. But that's all right. It's but four- dude, you got an awesome job. Come I on, do, I do, I do. I'm not trying to 
downplay it at all. It's mm-hmm. Forestwood Cup week. Other than at home with my baby girl, there's no place in the world that I would rather be right now. So Darren, this is awesome. We cannot say anything more after I, that. Yeah. That's the that's absolutely. the highlight clip of the week yeah, right there. Absolutely. Joe, thank you so much, dude. We appreciate everything for, for having us here. And, and you do have an amazing job. I mean that sincerely. Thank you. I'm, I'm very blessed. I couldn't appreciate you guys coming more. I'm happy you're here. And uh, let's do it again next year. Yeah, well, and let's yeah. and why don't you come check in later on in the week? We're going to be doing Perfect. this. Th- or th- whatever, yeah, the week, in the next couple days. Yeah. I'm Sounds losing good. my mind already. Yeah, we can Sunday, recap. Sunday, we'll be able to talk a lot more about the tournament, what's actually going yeah, on. Yeah, and, and give me some inside skinny dirt. Uh, I need you to find that. I'll, I'll do my best. All right. That's Joe Opager. He's from FLW Outdoors. I'm Pat Renwick. This is Ryan Popcorn Whitaker. Put the power poles down. Uh, I think we got Forrest Wood coming up next. We'll be back in a moment.